Hello, in this video we will discuss what are trunk ports. Guys, in the last video if you remember to make communication possible between VLAN 10 and if I have to draw the same topology I will do it like this. So the lower guys are member of VLAN 10, the upper guys are member of VLAN 20. So in the last video I was using two links between switches. One for VLAN 10, other for VLAN 20. So, in this case, I will show you how you can use trunk ports to solve the problem. So, for trunk ports, first of all, we need only one link. And next is, click on fast forward time now. On both the ends, you have to configure this port as trunk. How you will do? Interface FA0 by 3. Okay, first of all, let me rename the switch. Host name switch 1. And here, configure terminal host name switch 2. Now, if I go to switch 1, let me create VLAN 10 name HR, let's say VLAN 20 name is IT. Interface FA 0 by 1 switch port access VLAN 10. Now I am running one more command, switch port mode access. With the help of this command, I am making it access. Now you can ask me, Piyush, uh, in the previous video also you have not shown this command. Actually, on Cisco switches, we have DTP. DTP is dynamic trunking protocol and by default, ports can be dynamic auto or dynamic desirable that we will be discussing in this particular video, how we will use DTP. And whenever you are running the command switch port mode access, actually you are disabling DTP on the port and you are making it manually access. Next, if I go to interface FA0 by 2, again switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Now I go to switch. So first of all, I will create a VLAN, VLAN 10, name, HR, VLAN 20, name, IT, interface FA0 by 1, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 10, interface FA0 by 2, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 20. Now if you remember, we have to configure the in-between port member of VLAN, no. No, sorry, not any VLAN. We have to make it trunk. How we will make it trunk? Look here. On switch 1, first of all, I will run the command interface fast ethernet 0 slash 3. Switch port mode trunk. So I have to run this command to make the port as trunk. Next, Interface FA0 by 3, switch port mode trunk. So on both the end, you have to run this command. Again, you can click on fast forward time. Now, there is only single link. How to verify? This is the trunk port show interface trunk. You can see port number 3 is trunk. Mode is on. On means we have configured it forcefully trunk. And I will be showing you DTP. Wait for some time. Next, v VLANs allowed, so all VLANs are allowed, mine VLANs are 10 and 20, so you can see they are in the same range. If you read VLANs allowed and active in management domain, so all VLANs are allowed, it doesn't mean that all VLANs are existing. Which VLANs are existing in the network? VLAN 1, that is by default, and 10 and 20 are created by me. So those VLANs are allowed. Now we want to see that through the single port, both VLAN users can communicate, yes, VLAN 10 users can communicate and if I show you VLAN 20 users will also communicate, both type of communication is successful. Now we want to understand how, guys, when we talk about trunk ports, trunk ports always support a feature called tagging. I also call it VLAN tagging. So something like this will happen, let's say this user will send data. So switch knows that this user is member of VLAN 10. Now switch will forward this data out of trunk port because like I told you trunk port is member of all the VLANs or you can say trunk port will forward data of all the VLANs which are basically allowed on it. So 
switch will add a tag into that data tag of the vlan let's say user belongs to vlan 10 so switch will add a tag of vlan 10 to tell the other end switch that yes this data belongs to vlan 10 like you can see we are here using a single channel to send traffic for each and every vlan so how we will make the other switch identify that this particular traffic belongs to which vlan we are doing it with the help of vlan tagging i can show you if you want so if I go to simulations, let me delete all the things. First of all, let me go to packet capture. Let me try to send data from here to here. So it will send data to the switch. So if I see here, if I check the inbound PDU details. So there is a field and TCI field is there. Value is 0x14. So windows are no value is 0 x 14 so if you want to write 0 0 0 1 and if you if you want to write okay i think you don't know so these are actually hexadecimal values i am converting them to binary so i am writing here this binary for 1 and binary for 4 will be 0 1 0 0 so in total 0, 0, 0, 0001 and 0, 0100 0, 0. so this is actually binary for this x value now if you convert it into decimal it will become 20 16 plus 4 it means this traffic belongs to vlan 20 so actually switch is adding some information into my traffic with the help of which the other switch will get to know that this traffic belongs to which vlan so if i delete it and do the same for vlan 10 you can see user will forward the traffic and this time you switch will add the tag see by default when traffic is received from the user no tag is there but when switch is forwarding it switch is adding a tag 0xa this time so 0xa is again a hexadecimal value so you have to convert a into binary a means 10 10 means 1010 so if you convert it into decimal value will be 10 so actually this vlan is also 10 so like i show you that how you will uh, you can say differentiate between traffic of different vlans now next thing what is dtp guys dtp stands for dynamic trunking protocol if you have seen uh, to make the link trunk actually link is trunk port is never trunk so to make the link trunk you have to configure trunk configuration on both ends so what cisco did cisco come up with the concept of dtp in dtp we have two modes so let me write here if you want to learn it so in dtp we have two modes first mode is dynamic auto second is dynamic desirable dynamic auto means i cannot initiate trunking process it means if both sides are dynamic auto let's say i have a switch one which port uh, we have port number three for example that is dynamic auto it is connected to one more switch and uh, on other end also we have dynamic dynamic auto and port number is three of switch two for example in this case trunk will not form because according to the concept of dynamic auto, it will never initiate trunking process. So if we have switch one, port number three, it is running dynamic desirable. Dynamic desirable means I will initiate trunking process. So if the other side is auto also, it will not create any problem and trunk will form. Because dynamic desirable side will initiate trunking process and dynamic auto will respond accordingly. So, according to Cisco, if you want to make a trunk link, you have to comp perform configuration only on one end and it will be a very good news for you. If you have by default dynamic desirable on your switch ports, so you don't have to do anything that is simply plug and play. 
plug and pass data. In that case, there is no need to perform trunking. So guys, DTP is a protocol which will by default enabled on Cisco devices and it will help you forming trunks. So guys, in this video, we have understood what is a trunk, how to configure manual trunk links and what is the basic use of DTP. Thank you.